wrote this talk uh, back in December before we kind of had this uh, situation that we're in now um, and um, I extracted parts of that speech to, to come up with the talk for tonight and it seems um, to me that it's even more uh, relevant today in these particularly challenging times. I love a challenge now, back in my previous career, I spent a great deal of time shadowing salespeople in various countries, from Norway to South Africa, India to Uruguay, Russia to Australia. I was an international market manager representing my brand in these countries across the world, putting together sales and marketing plans, promotions, launches, helping our distributors to sell more of our products. And being on the ground, seeing the market in action, the products on the shelves was an important aspect of that. Now, if I were to describe these salespeople, they were invariably warm and chatty, knowledgeable about their customers and their product portfolio. And it was a tough category, sold into a variety of outlets from huge major multiples to the corner shop. The space was at a premium on the shelves. And it was also a product that went through bubbles, a kind of feast or famine um, situation. Now, one salesperson stood out for me. I love a challenge, she said, as we headed into a newsagent's down some back alley in uh, Dublin city centre. She'd been working in sales for under a year, having migrated out of the office, pushing for a chance to try something different. And she was succeeding in a tough environment. She had something. Now, she clearly loved what she did. She actually relished going into the retailer that pushed back, even more so than the ones that were easy wins. She enjoyed building a relationship, breaking down their barriers. It felt like a proper win. She had resilience in abundance. And that resilience is something that we could all do with, especially at the moment. So what is resilience? How do we develop it? It's that ability to cope with problems and setbacks, to be able to use our skills and strengths to get through challenges, to recover and to push forwards again. Now, I love this quote from Nelson Mandela. Do not judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. Because that describes resilience. Now, resilient people are more likely to experience the positive emotions, things like happiness, joy, pleasure. They tend to be socially connected, to be more outgoing and embrace new challenges, new experiences. And when they're under pressure, they have a tendency to cope better, even expand and grow. That kind of describes most of the salespeople that I met around the world. Whereas people who are less resilient are more likely to experience negative emotions like sadness, anxiety, jealousy. They have a tendency to hunker down in times of adversity, unable to see past the stresses. So it certainly sounds like a trait that's worth developing. There are three key elements in developing resilience. Now, firstly, failure, not in avoiding it, but rather in rebounding from it and learning from the experience. Next, stress. Again, not in avoiding it, but embracing it, using it to propel you forwards. And lastly, understanding your unique attributional style, your own perceptions, and most importantly, your attachment to outcomes. So firstly, let's take a look at failure. Now, we learn as much, if not more, from our failures as we do from our successes. It's a building block if you want to promote resilience. And failure is a bit like catching a cold. If you uh, were brought up in a sterile environment, you never caught a cold or picked up a bug as a child, your immune system would not be prepared for life outside that bubble. So when you do eventually step outside, you finally catch that cold. It's going to feel like the worst cold ever. It might even be life-threatening. Your immune system will be overwhelmed because it hasn't developed any resistance or resilience. But... If as a child you played in the mud, you interacted with other children, if you ate that bit of food that fell on the floor, you are going to be fine. So embrace the things that might cause you to fail. Because when you do that, when you embrace the unknown, take risks, maybe even suffer some hardships, you start to build resilience. And that's when you move from coping in life into thriving. 
Now my salesperson in Dublin did this. She took each pushback, each failure and learned from it. She used it to adjust, adjust her pitch, to refine it, to get better. And it can't have been easy at first either. Like that Mandela quote, she would have fallen down several times and had to get back up again. Now next up is stress. We often think of stress as something that stops us in our tracks, that freeze, flight, fight response that causes us to fall into things like anxiety, depression, procrastination, anger, unable to see past the stresses. But stress is also a promoter of action, pushing us on to achieve bigger and better things. If you can reframe things as a challenge and not see it as an obstacle, you activate your challenge response. The symptoms are the same. A raised heart rate, narrowed vision, all getting you ready for that freeze flight fight. But this pushes you to action. You run towards a challenge. And stress is physical. That raised heart rate, changes in breathing patterns, temperature, tension in muscles, churning stomach, all of which are very similar to feelings of excitement which is where your challenge response lives. So by taking on challenges that push you out of your comfort zone, you prepare your mind and your body. If you never go through any hardships, any stressful moments, any discomforts, then the moment you do, and if it happens to be a big one, you will surely be swallowed up by it. So understand your stress response, how that stress can be used to propel you forwards, not hold you back. Instead of thinking what's the worst that can happen, ask yourself what's the best that can happen. And that brings us to the last element, your attributional style. Now think of this as the lens through which you view the world. And this is a big element of resilience. It's about your own thoughts and behaviours that feed into your feelings, whether they're the positive ones, happiness, joy, pride, pleasure, or the negative ones, anger, sadness, jealousy. There are three aspects to your attributions. Now, how personally you take things. Secondly, how permanent you perceive them to be. And thirdly, how much they impact across your life. And it's all wrapped up in your attachment to the outcomes. Now, once you've given your pitch, once you've sent that proposal, you've finished that meeting, you've given your best to secure the deal, can you move on from whatever happens, whatever the outcome is, whether it's success or failure? Because once you've given your best, you have to let it go without investing in the outcome that is really out of your hands. So... Your building blocks of resilience, embrace risks, celebrate your successes, learn from your failures. Understand your unique stress footprint, what your triggers are, what helps to prevent stress overwhelming you and the strategies that you can use um, when you are feeling the pinch of stress. And finally, don't attach to the outcomes. Do your best and then send it on. Thank you. Thank you.